Finally, I am going to start in on some of the things in the Bible that I find to be contradictory, funny, and uh, have a tendency to help me uh, get through a lot of conversations uh, when I debate or discuss things with people of faith, mostly Christians, uh, about why their uh, religion is mythology, uh, cultism, and 99.9999% uh, of it is uh, based in paganism. And here's why. So, for example, uh, one of the things that Christians will say is um, e the drinking the blood of Christ, uh, the tra uh, um, transubstantiation of Christ, is, it is the, the Eucharist, uh, drinking the blood of Christ, uh, eating the flesh of Christ, uh, if you will. Well, um, it started well before Christianity uh, was actually uh, became a cult itself, or if you will, uh, Christianity as we, as we started to know it, before the Jesus person slash myth started. So, um, maybe about um, half a millennia before the Christianity cult came about, um, <clears throat> we had Dionysus, I hope I'm saying that name right, Dionysus, and he was a Greek god of uh, fertility and sex, basically. And they would have festivals, yearly festivals, about uh, for Dionysus. And what they would do is they would drink lots of wine. Well, that wine was considered to be the blood of Dionysus because it would, you know, it symbolized his blood, and it was, uh, uh, of course. Uh, a giant party, if you will, and uh, it was used for basically large sex parties. <laughs> Everyone would get drunk, dance, and basically have sex and make babies. It was, it was a fertility type thing, which mirrors a lot of, uh, as far as um, uh, deaths and resurrection of Christ and whatever is Easter and all that stuff. Um, also, there was Mithras. Now, Mithras was a cult that was popular around about the time that Christianity and the Jesus myth and cult was coming about as well. And uh, one of the things, well, I guess a couple of the things they did was uh, Mithras would have uh, a dinner, he had a, a supper, uh, where they would eat bread and wine. Well, the bread and wine were, of course, you know, symbols of the blood and flesh, and also they would, uh, that was symbolizing a bull apparently that Mithras had slaughtered, or slain if you will, as the flesh of the meal that they were eating. And that was uh, brought from paganism itself. So that uh, I can see, and hopefully more people can see, that that's where uh, the uh, Christ uh, flesh and blood, uh, I guess, uh, Eucharist thing if you will, came from, was from those two paganist uh, religions. Uh, and, and it brings me to something else I wanted to discuss before. I completely forget about it because I'm really good at forgetting stuff. Uh, is, is magic. So uh, in several verses of the Bible, and, and as so far I've found at least 30 of them, uh, anywhere from Leviticus to uh, Galatians, you, you name it, um, there, Exodus, uh, there are plenty of verses in the Bible about magic and um, cannibalism <laughs> and there are no-nos according to the Bible you can't do magic uh, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live or a sorceress depending on which version of the Bible that you're reading to live thou shalt not suffer a witch or sorceress to live because they were casting spells uh, they were in, involved in the dark arts uh, things that were just unsavory during that time, as you can tell, you know, the, the witch hunts and whatnot, so they would kill witches. Because magic, you know, spells, incantations were wrong. They were in the Bible as no-nos. You could not do those things. Now, if we fast forward, as far as magic is concerned, uh, to present day, 2019, we can go to any restaurant or anyone's home that you know that is of faith, if you will, and the first thing they do before they eat any meal is they 
bow their heads, grab each other's hands, and they pray. Well, unfortunately, um, praying is a form of incantation. And when you do that incantation, what you're basically saying is, um, please, God, Jesus, whoever, protect my family and my food by blessing it. Because I'm saying this, this incantation over my food and family to protect them by using a magical spell to protect myself, my family, and blessing my food. So that's just one of the things I wanted to bring up as far as magic and uh, kind of sort of the, uh, I guess, history behind the blood and wine uh, and the uh, bread or crackers, if you will, and flesh, the Eucharist uh, thing concerning Jesus. So uh, the next time one of your Christian buddies or faithful, if you will, um, wants to argue with you or I'll say debate because that's probably a better word or have a conversation because that's a two-way thing hopefully about uh, anything in the Bible. And if you want them to uh, contradict themselves, I think that's a pretty good way of kind of painting themselves into a corner and kind of helping them paint themselves into a corner by bringing up uh, the facts behind the Eucharist and also uh, bringing up the magic in um, the Bible, which is a no-no, but yet and still uh, they pray over everything by, uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> uh, chanting these magical incantations to protect, or protectionist spells, if you will. So, Harry Potter's not bad, so please stop picking on Harry Potter. He's, it, it's just a movie, but they should really not be so hypocritical when it comes to um, witchcraft, sorcery, whatever, because uh, yeah, they are the biggest, I guess, uh, uh, users, if you will, <laughs> uh, of magical incantations when it comes to their food, their daily lives. Uh, Christians pray for everything and about everything and it's all just a giant magical incantation. You know, you, uh, all the thing they need now is a funny hat and a wand to wave over their pancakes in the morning before they eat them. So that's just my quick little two cents, probably a little longer than what it should should have been. Um, so thanks for joining everybody and uh, just kind of looking in on me. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> but uh, please <laughs> make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, don't forget to hit the bell down below uh, so you can get notifications when I drop new videos. Um, please feel free to leave any comments uh, or questions. If I've said something wrong or I'm incorrect about something, I'm more than happy to correct it if I find that I am wrong because, of course, I will investigate and you know, probably spend half the night finding out where I screwed up. But please feel free to question me on anything that I've said uh, or give me, you know, your two cents. I'm always willing to talk about any topic. And thank you guys very much. Have a fantastic evening. And please, no magic.